All right, so far we have gotten clean line art and we have set that up in Photopea. And I did mine as a vector and then brought that in. And that's my black bread on top. Underneath is my white bread, the white blank. I lock both of those layers. You do not want to add anything to those layers. You just want them there. Then in between, we start our coloring sandwich. What is digital coloring? How is it different than digital painting? Digital coloring exists behind real or implied line art. So if you look at my slides on digital coloring, it always includes line art. Coloring behind real or implied outline, or I'll change that to line art, because outline could be misinterpreted. So what do I mean by implied? Ooh. Well, because sometimes we were looking at Wonder Woman before. I think I have an example. Where is it? Hmm. We get, we'll get to all of these. But sometimes when you're done with your coloring, you'll then erase the line art that you used to get there. I thought for sure I had an example. Well, you'll see flat color without any line art around it. It definitely exists in the culture. So we'll see if we, we'll be on the lookout for that. But digital coloring starts with an outline, and then you color behind the outline. And then maybe at the end, you take that outline away. <laughs> it's still digital coloring. Digital painting is not based on coloring behind any kind of line. It's based on building up shapes, textures, and brush colors, right? Just like, like paint on a canvas. So we left off talking about digital flat color. So here's a really good example. This is the professional job. And this professional job in digital art is called being a flatting artist. A flatting artist works for a digital coloring studio. These digital coloring studios might do comic books, might do websites, might be, work for an advertising firm. And lots of different colorists work on a project. The first, this isn't the people that ink it. This isn't the people that draw it. These are just the people that color it. The first job is flatting. Flatting is a good entry level digital art job, but it's a little bit grueling because this next step that we're going to demonstrate is what a flatting artist does. You use kind of these really crazy out there colors and you use them because they are so distinct from each other right? That they're easily selectable. And then you fill in every part behind the line art so that a, a more highly paid colorist can come after you and change those colors for the colors that they think look the best. Which in this case, because this is not my illustration, it's a professional comic illustration. In this case, the flatting artist did all of this nice distinction of even like this little leather knot on the sword is a different color than the hilt, than the wrap, than the string, than the scabbard. And then that professional colorist just said, ah, oh, we'll just make it all brown. Right? Because this is to allow it to be selectable and changed into different colors. Right? So this is the difference between flat color and local flat color. This is because the colorist determined this is like a medieval story. Everything's brown. So I'm just going to do purple or browns, orange or browns, yellow or browns. But that's still helpful because each of these is easily selectable and changeable. And we're going to see how that's built upon beyond the flats. This is my favorite colorist working today. His name's Dave Stewart. He's a freelancer. He works for all the different big publishers. And one of his favorite collaborators is the artist Mike Mignola, who, who writes and draws and inks Hellboy, which is an independent comic. Um, but Mike Mignola is a very accomplished artist. He does a lot of his own paintings, his, his own coloring. But when it comes to professional illustration, reproductions, he wants Dave Stewart to do it. So Dave Stewart's job is only coloring. And he starts with flatting. This is what flatting looks like for him. And then this is what the finished product looks like for him. The reason I like Dave Stewart is it looks so simple, and yet there's a lot of real subtlety there. Because the art of flat coloring is choosing the right colors. <laughs> and it's not that easy. 
because there are millions of colors to choose from. It was a lot easier in early publication days when there were only 256 colors to choose from, or these kind of 72 like core colors to use. But that changed in the 80s, and now we have millions of colors, especially with digital production. So we're going to learn about all of that. Okay, so then what can you do once you have your flat color? Then you can start adding variations. Either soft edge du duotone, which give you great gradual variations between lights and darks of those flat colors, or hard edge duotone, which gives us kind of that animation cell shading feel, where you have to actually pick a place where the shadow breaks into highlights, which can be really fun, but that's not in the line art. That's all in the coloring. So a really nice duotone example. And that same medieval guy, that's the local flat color. Then you can see how much duotone adds to it. Which is just adding to the sandwich. Or here we have our flat color Wonder Woman underneath the line art. Adding soft edge duotone. You can see how much kind of painting and rendering is involved in that. So we see so much more of the, the three-dimensionality of this style of illustration. Ah, uh, here it is. <laughs> so that's a duotone, but the, the outline has been removed, right? It's still digital coloring, even though we don't see an outline anymore. Instead, it's an implied outline. The only way you can get that as clean is to build it with an outline underneath. And a lot of animation, especially now, has an incredibly thin outline around it but it is still there because it contains the digital color. Now, I'll go back to that as we get a little bit further in the project. Okay, so how do you choose the right colors? Choosing them from this color selector is virtually impossible. You can create your own swatches, you can create custom palettes, but instead, this is what I recommend. Find color inspiration. And then, very simply in Photopea, just drag that file, control T, shrink it down into the corner. Doesn't even matter if you distort it or not, of your project. This becomes your color palette. That's one way to do it. Another way to do it is to open it up in a new file. And in Photoshop, you're able to set up two of those like nested together, like a split screen. But in Photop, you're not able to. So this is the most easy way. So now I'm going to choose some local color. But first, it's asking me if I want to rasterize my smart object. I do not. Remember, we brought in our vector EPS into a file that was 11 by 14 inches. This is my vector EPS. It's super sharp. It's a vector. We brought that into something that was 11 by 14 inches by 350 pixels per inch. But because that EPS, this is a new thing with PhotoP just this semester, that EPS carries all that metadata of all those different vector paths. It's having this glitch where it's changing your image size back. We found that with your logos. So before you go to digital coloring, go back to image size and make sure that it's 11 by 14. It switched it to 2.2 inches by 2.8 inches. And that's because of the smart board size it was in Illustrator when I made a vector of it. So, but because it's a smart object, I can just change that to what I want, 11 by 14. And it will size up after some processing. It will size up perfectly. And now it's nice and smooth. Now, the beauty is you can do that at any time because it's a smart object. It will always be clean. But you want to color behind high resolution because what we're coloring with are pixels, not vectors. All right, so I want to color something now in my sandwich. This is my color reference, so I'm just going to color this red. So this doesn't really count. This is just a way of choosing colors. So in my sandwich, I have my black layer my white layer, and now my flat local color layer. I'm going to lock this too, just in case I don't accidentally paint on it. All right. So on my flat local color, I can just use a brush, hold down option, pick a color. It will go into my, my foreground color options, 
and then I can just start painting behind. That is a way to digitally color. It's not a bad way. It works, but it takes a lot of time. The faster way to start your flatting is to find contained shapes. So I go to my black line art layer and I use my magic wand with contiguous turned on. And this is what Noemi was talking about in her mentorship presentation. And on the black line art layer, I can click and hold down shift and any contained shapes, there are so many, I click the white space inside the vector and you'll get that little marching ants. And I have a lot of contained shapes and I have some open shapes. That's why I'm doing a coloring book. So notice it's open there. So if I click there, that's gonna spill into everything else. And because it's a maze, it opens out into the background. And so I don't want that. Now I'll stop soon, just so you can see what I'm doing. So if I turn off now my black line layer, remember that selections stay and can be moved between layers. Then I move to my flat local color, and instead of using the paintbrush to paint, and it will only paint within the selection, it's like a stencil, instead I'm going to use what's underneath the eraser and underneath the gradient tool, it's called the paint bucket tool, super basic digital art tool. And then I just click and it will fill everything I have selected with that flat color. Then I can hit Command D to deselect and you see how it keeps it separate. Now, these are not the colors I might choose as my final local colors, right? But this is a way of getting rid of that white space, starting to fill it in so I can choose the white colors. And because I'm selecting those contained shapes from my line art, they don't touch. So then at any time, I can just stay on my flat local color and I can steal another color, like let's say this yellow, hold down option, I'm on the paint bucket tool, scroll down, holding down space, and I can just replace it with a new color. So this is just how the paint bucket tool works. Ah, so when you're on the paint bucket or on a paintbrush, any paint tool, and you hold down option, that will change it to what's called the eyedropper tool. And that allows you to steal a color. You'll see how the color changes in my foreground window from any file that's open in PhotoP. So if I want pink, you know, I'll select that, scroll down, Maybe I want the light bulb to be pink. Okay, and we keep it separate from our, our black line layer. That's why we lock those other things. So I'm just building a flat color. The goal here is to kill whitey, to get rid of all the white, right? And at this point, this is when I like to make duplicates of my white bread, and I fill the top one with black, And all of these stay locked, right? And then I fill the one in between with gray. And that's why you saw Noemi, our mentorship presentation, coloring on gray, because it helps you see where you're adding lights and where you're adding darks. So I'm gonna lock all of these, but leave the gray turned on now because maybe I want some light shapes as well. So what, what can be light? Like maybe the teeth. That's a pretty obvious color choice for teeth. And maybe instead of white, because white's a very boring color option, flat color option, it's actually not a color. Solid white and solid black are not colors. There's no color content there. There's no arc to the hue for our eye. So instead of white, I'm going to, steel like this kind of cream color and I could use the eyedropper and do it or I can just use my paint bucket and hold down option and steal it right. and now when I drop that in on my flat color layer because in the flat color layer all of these are touching there is no black line separating them all I have to do is click on one of them and they'll all fill in and that's what they look like on black, and that's what they look like on white. 